All right, guys, KB32 here. Check it out. We're sitting in the uh, Freedom Studios. Man, I wanted to uh, give the old politics a little chill break for a little bit uh, and get back to the grounds, the roots, where we all started. Um, a number, millions, uncounted, millions and millions and millions of people went out and bought their firearms. And this video is kind of like addressed addressed to you guys, not not the pros, but I certainly want to, I expect the uh, pros to give some input and I, I would love it for you to give some input and help some individuals out. Well, what we want to talk about is you've gone out and you've bought that brand new firearm, either rifle, uh, semi-automatic rifle, pistol, and the first thing they're going to try to do is they're going to try to sell you an optic or a dot or something else to be putting on there. And guys, this is, uh, it's a lot like, oh, I don't know, Call of Duty, <laughs> you know, you've got the uh, the ring with the uh, dot and uh, everybody, is rec everybody recognizes this guy right here. This is an EOTech. And this is uh, really cool, but would I recommend this for someone who is beginning? If you had the cash, sure, I would. But these are not cheap. They're not uh, economical. There's a lot of other items out there that are. But don't make the mistake of buying something that's too cheap. Uh, say, for instance, you find something on Am Amazon, the, the Penty, these guys for $29. Uh, there's a couple of them that might last, but I would say steer away from those things. So let's do this. What are we going to do? And this is completely off the cuff, and this is just me talking to you guys. There's no script to this thing. Uh, we're going to talk about dots. We're going to talk about the different types of dots. We're going to talk about the LED uh, projected dots, the hologram dots, the uh, reflex sights. Uh, we're going to talk about the difference between reflex sights, be it for a pistol, like this little guy right here, or for a rifle. This is a really nice one. I just did a review on, uh, I think it was the R spec. This is an M spec. This is a really cool one. And then you've got uh, certain things like prism scopes, and you've got uh, low power variable optics like this guy right here, or you've got something that you want to shoot a little longer. So the first thing I'm going to ask you, you've got your AR, you've got your semi-automatic firearm. What exactly do you plan on doing with that? I mean, are we going to use it for home defense? Uh, are we going to use it for, oh, I don't know, just getting out there and doing everyday shooting? Uh, are we going to use it for, I don't know, getting out of shooting steel at long distance? A lot of times people have fun. Can't have much fun these days because, well, ammo, <laughs> it's not around. A friend of mine, I zeroed his uh, optic for me. He's like, all right, now all we got to do is go out and shoot it. And I go, cool, go buy some ammo and come back to talk to me. And he said, why? And I said, don't you have a bunch of ammo that you can make? And I go, yes, yes, that's a problem. I don't make ammo for other people. Uh, so anyway, we're going to categorize these things in a couple different ways, and we're going to go over some of the pluses and some minuses of them, and uh, just go from there. This is a talk. This is for you and I to hang out and uh, get to know each other. So on the table right here, I have this little guy right here. This is a reflex sight. It reminds me a lot if you play in the video games, and that's one of the things that, you know, I when I was in the military... We didn't have these guys. We didn't have the ACOGs, which are sitting back there, or the aim points. Uh, so this was all a novelty to me. So the first thing that I looked at was, well, I've got so much tied up in a rifle, and this is how much money I've got tied up or available to put on a, a dot or a, whatever else I'm doing. So I would say that as long as you stick about the $100, $120 mark, you're going to come out pretty good because I'll tell you why. You've got a lot of manufacturers out there, Holosun, Primary Arms, uh, Sightmark, uh, Sig Sauer, just to name a, t a few, uh, Vortex. So, yeah, so you got a red dot. These are pretty nice. This is a tw MD-25 from Primary Arms. This is one of the nicest ones. Uh, this is rem reminds me of the uh, Trigicon RMR, RMR, uh, MRO. In any case, the, re the difference is, couple hundred dollars in price. Uh, and a nice thing is, and we'll get into reticles here in a few minutes because that's something else that we need to take into consideration. So you've got a couple red dot options here in front of me. So we've got a red dot that's got an LED projection. Another thing to keep in consideration, can take into consideration, is battery life. Something like this, even the EOTech, this is a hologram. This is not a projected. This is uh, about 500 hours of life. And you get into something like the Sig Sauer right here with the Shake Awake. Now, what that means is you set this rifle down with this optic on it, it's going to go to sleep. 
and it saves the battery. And there's a motion sensor in there, shake awake or whatever else is involved. And what that does is it illuminates that thing the minute you pick it up, which means you could get, oh, actually about 50,000 hours of life out of this thing. You won't have to worry about changing the battery out, but every five or six years, uh, depending on how much you use. Now, the cool thing about red dots is that for those people who have super clear vision, they work really well. Of course, when, if you wear readers or you have astigmatism, you're going to have a problem uh, in that you're going to see a flare. Okay, So here's another option before you go out and you buy your red dot. Okay, uh, There's a thing called a prism scope. And a lot of different companies make these things. This is uh, the Cyclops uh, by Primary Arms. And the difference is this is a prism scope. This is a prism scope. This is a two and a half power prism scope. This is an old ACSS prism scope, and this is a five power prism scope. Now, we're not going to talk about oh, uh, reticles uh, yet, but we'll get into that. We're also going to talk about mounts here in a few minutes because that's a scary thing as well. A lot of people don't have a comprehension of what that is. But what a, a prism scope allows you to do is to adjust this rear diopter so that that reticle comes in clear for your vision. It's kind of like having a pair of glasses on this thing. You can adjust it. So that's a huge advantage, especially on the Cyclops right here. And they got a new one, the Gen 2, coming out. And guys, you can go to kb32tag.com, and uh, there's links there that you can find out all the information on this. But in any case, the nice thing is, is with this scope and this scope, uh, you can adjust that diopter so that the reticle is clear. And that's important to me because if I'm going to go to like a, I don't know, CQC uh, style or a competition, I want to be able to make sure that that, regardless of what glasses I'm wearing, if it's a situation where I'm not going to have a pair of glasses on me or safety glasses or whatever, adjustable lenses, that I can adjust that diopter for that specific firearm so that I can go in. I know that the, the uh, reticle is going to be clear. Okay. So a couple different things. You've got uh, reflex, and what that means, and basically that these two sight marks are reflex optics. Well, they're basically all reflex optics in that there is a little emitter right inside this thing. And what it does is it emits an LED dot from the rear into the piece of glass. If you notice that on, say, this Sig Sauer, the front sight, the front piece of glass is angled. And what that does is it makes the dot, the little dot is projected onto that thing and it is pointed right back at you. And then you can adjust the windage and elevation, brightness, and uh, levels on this as well. Uh, I can't, I'm not going to pick them up because, you know, what, are, what do you think? YouTube's going to demonetize the crap out of this thing. Okay, so when we're talking about basic red dots, a lot of people, they're concerned about having, well, that's good for close in quarter stuff or home protection and things like that. What if I want to do something a little further away? Well, there's a, a, a good step. Oh, here's another. This is the brand new uh, five times prism scope. And I tell you what, man, these things are really, really nice. Uh, depends on the reticle. We'll talk about that, I think, in another video. I don't want to get involved in that. This right here, this is a magnifier. And what we do is we can take a regular old dot like this and then we can mount this magnifier behind it. And what the nice thing is about the magnifier, and you've seen this if you play Call of Duty, Medal of Honor, or whatever, uh, these things flip to the side. And that's the cool thing. This is a Juliet 4 by the guys over there at Sig Sauer. This is an absolute awesome piece of glass. And what it does is it instantly turns this red dot into a magnified optic. And you have the ability to flip it side to side. And it's really a nice thing. But you know what? Here's the whole thing. We were talking about this earlier uh, with the video, that, or not the video, but the picture I put out earlier, talking about low power variable optics. Well, this is not a small one. This is actually the ACSS. This is uh, the Griffin Mill, and this is the Platinum Scope. And I've got to finish up mounting this thing to uh, this uh, scope mount because I've got a very special rifle that I want to put this on. But what you have is the ability to go from, with the use of the zoom ring here, from one power to eight power. Okay, so the advantages are um, maybe less field of view. I haven't found that. There's a lot of cool optics out there uh, that have a lot of field of view and a lot of HD glasses. Uh, and what you're going to find out is the window box 
this is the area back here. You're not going to have to worry about adjusting so much, especially on one power, that you're going to have a real large screen, similar to what you would have if you were looking through this guy right here. Now, which one's faster? This guy's going to be faster up close, but I've shoot in competition with this one right here, except with the ACSS uh, Raptor, uh, and it's extremely fast. So there is the thing about low power variable optics versus a dot and a magnifier. And I've got a couple of videos out there. Now the links down below, well, there's a couple of them that are really popular. One, how to zero your scope, and number two, how to zero your red dot. So in any case, you got a low power variable optic, and these usually range from one power to six power, one power to eight power, and then one power to 10 power. I'm not a big fan of the Vortex, which is the one power to 10 power. Um, that's it. Now, let me, let me show you guys something. This guy right here, this is the primary arms. This is their, uh, what is this? This is the 4214. Um, the very first, second scope that I ever bought. And I saw this thing from Tim on Military Arms Channel when he put it on a Savage uh, 308, uh, talking about the best rifle under $1,000. I actually bought one of these with the ACSS reticle, and I ran the dog piss out of it. Uh, especially with the 77 grain because the ACSS, that's the reticle that has certain stuff in it. It's the Advanced Combat uh, Sighting System, I believe is the name of it. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dimitri. Well, anyway, $279 for a first focal plane scope, and we'll talk about that here in a second. Very nice scope, but I will tell you this. This was the second scope that I bought. The first scope, and I probably spent more time reviewing this guy and doing research on it to figure out is this the best $127 that I could spend and this is their uh, this is the UTG AccuShot and man I'll tell you what this has been a an absolute awesome beginner scope now is the glass that clear eh, probably not you're gonna get some vignetting around the edges uh, did it do what I wanted sure don't get caught up on the different colors. I mean, there's a lot of companies out there that will offer like, we've got 20 different reticles and eight different colors on our reflex site. Steer clear from that kind of stuff. Get something that's either red full-time or green full-time uh, because the more adjustments and the more reticles that you pop through there, unless it's digital like it is with the, uh, the EOTech or a couple of the other ones, you're going to get movement in that reticle, but we're getting in a little bit of advancement. But in any case, uh, the first scope I bought, this was $123, $127 delivered to the door on Amazon. And I bought it because for the money, it was what I could afford. Now, here's the thing. This is what is considered a second focal plane scope. And that means that the reticle will stay the same inside the scope at no matter what zoom you use. Okay. So uh, it, it's one of those things. But when we talk about scopes, we talk about the ocular section, the zoom, the diopter back here, or ocular, one of those things. And then we're going to talk about turrets. Another thing you want to take into consideration, and we could spend days and days and days talking about these things, and I just want to make it clear. You want to make sure that you're going to, well, European, we talk about mil rads, mil radian, and then MOA. My biggest thing was for beginners, uh, MOA for me, I, I think, you guys who have a lot of experience in this stuff, uh, help me out on this thing. What was your easiest one to adapt to at first? MOA was easy for me because one MOA at 100 yards is one inch. Uh, one MOA at 25 yards is a quarter of an inch. Uh, one MOA at uh, 200 yards is two inches. 300 yards, it was three inches. So that's one MOA at 300, well, Okay, so most men think that this is eight inches, but we all know, never mind. So anyway, uh, but then I learned down the road when you start getting into more of the big time long range shooting, mil radian is the way to go. <clears throat> so let's talk about other things. Uh, turrets, turrets, turrets. Uh, <clears throat> right here is a really neat scope. This is another primary arm, so I'm a big fan of those guys. They're a big fan of me. Uh, but what this entails, enables you to do is once you get it zero, you can turn and lock these uh, turrets down. And this has a little stop right here. 
And then what that does is it enables me to bring this thing back into a zero. And I haven't actually shot this optic on a rifle yet. Um, but in any case, what it does, and I'll show you. So this guy right here, this is the platinum. I can use these turrets and it goes back to a zero stop. And what that means is no matter where I'm at, if I go to a new location and I got to come back to zero, boom, that'll come back to zero. Um, this guy will not. So there's a lot of advantages and disadvantages. However, this is $127 and this is a $1,500 scope. Now, the, the wild thing about scopes, everybody's going to uh, talk about where they're made. You're going to come, come across scopes that are made in China, the Philippines, and Japan. Uh, some in America, a lot in Germany, uh, Swiss made, things like that. Um, Rex, Diver Source Rex, huge resource uh, for really in-depth reviews and, and the know-how on scopes. Uh, great resource. Uh, but I'm a big fan of this guy right here. Because, well, I'll tell you what. This scope is a 6 to 24 with zero stops. It's made in the Philippines. The glass is excellent. This is, I think, $7.99. This guy right here, $14.99. And you can get scopes that are up in the range of good grief, man. They, they could be, oh, I don't know, uh, five six thousand dollars i mean schmidt and bender you got uh calls you got uh leupold uh, a lot of those out there okay before we leave because i know this is rambling on i'm just hoping and i'm giving you some general ideas of what's going on mounting height you're gonna you're gonna see a bunch of things like say for instance um you see this scope right here the mount that it is on is a 20 moa mount but it is set up for a bolt rifle so you might notice that this scope is set up for a gas rifle where you, you don't have as much room in the rear of the rifle as you do with this one. So what we have is what's called a cantilevered scope right here. And then there's this, the straight up mount. The cantilevered is, is what they're talking about right here. Okay, so when you buy a, an optic, you're going to be looking at what you want to put it on and how far forward you want it. Do me a favor. Please don't mount it on like this with the front of the rifle that way. I see that all the time. It's a lot of fun to watch. Um, we're going to get into, we can talk about the uh, elevation change in uh, scope mounts, uh, which basically means that they're going to give you an additional, uh, well, tilt. So say for instance, this has a 20 MOA tilt to it, and what it does is it actually tilts the scope down and brings a rise into the barrel so that it gives your turrets more elevation. Uh, height, height over bore. So a lot of times you'll see optics where your scope mount is very low set like this. This is set up for an AK-47. It's got to be set up really, really low. This is set up what we call a... Uh, one third uh, co witness. And what that means is this is going to be a little bit higher than the height of a set of iron sights, which enables me to pretty much bring my cheek up. Now, the latest fashion that I've seen is that I've seen these guys up there with damn risers this tall, and I, I can see it. I know why, because they can actually bring it up. They're in an upright position, and you sure search and scan like this. That's good stuff. Um, that's it. So what do we have? We got our dots, reflex, holograph. We've got prism scopes, just like this one and this one. You're usually going to get, you can actually get these now where they're uh, down to one power, two and a half power, three power, five power. I've seen them up to six. You've got a low power variable optic like this, which I think is probably the most ideal for any rifle. Uh, if you're going for lightweight, uh, go with a dot. And then you've got the option of going ahead and putting one of these and these together where you've got the dot and you've got a magnifier and then you've got precision scopes like this. Now we talked about, <laughs> and I'm getting off <laughs> canter because I don't have a script here, second focal plane scope. Then you have a first focal plane scope. The idea behind that is that uh, first focal plane scope, the reticle will stay uh, in the, it, it will keep its size in relation to the target, no matter where you zoom. So if you're zoomed all the way in, it's this big. If you're zoomed all the way out, it's this big. 
We were talking about using the low power variable optic. When this guy's on one power, there's a lit portion of this that it basically appears like a dot. And then you've got the full uh, Griffin mill reticle in it when it's in eight power. So what's gonna happen when you zoom it out uh, to like 24 power, or zoom it in to 24 power, that's what your reticle's gonna be. When you zoom it in, out to like four, it's actually gonna shrink. And that's because you want to be able to estimate your range. That's a video long down the road for you guys. So, uh, yeah. What would I suggest? It's up to you. Have fun with it. Most of all, have fun with it. Learn how to use what you have and use it well. Those are the biggest things. My biggest thing here is I just want to show you the differences between the different types of uh, uh, optics and uh, let you make a decision from there. I hope this video was helpful, guys. This was a long one. But with that being said, uh, if you did like the video, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already done so. And uh, we always hit them like this, sport red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Because freedom is not free. I'm KB32, and I am out of here. Y'all be good. Boom.